Negative keywords are an important part of Google Ads. Now, of course, as you know, like every other advice around negative keywords, you can find them by using the Google Ads Keyword Planner, and you can find them by going into your search terms report and understanding how people are finding your business and eliminating bad searches. But in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna focus on finding negative keywords before a campaign goes live, but taking into consideration the way that people search for your services and preempting what they could type in as negative keywords based on their search intent. So we're gonna look at that. I've got a template for you guys at the end that you can use as well. So we're gonna learn all of that and more coming up. Hey guys, Darren Taylor of TheBigMarketer.com here and my job is to make you a PPC expert. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'm a trainer and consultant for PPC. I specialize in Google Ads and if that sounds of interest to you, you should consider subscribing to the channel. And in this video, we are exploring how to build a negative keyword list before a campaign goes live. But more importantly, we're not gonna use any of the tools like the Google Ads Keyword Planner or Search Terms Report. We're gonna look at the intent and the different ways people search for services on Google and understand how we can use that intent to build a keyword list before a campaign goes live. Look, I know everyone who does Google Ads knows how to build a keyword list and add keywords into their campaigns by using the Google Ads keyword tool and also using the search terms report. But let's take a look at the intent of the ways people search for your services and see if we can preempt and understand how they search and use that information to stop them from performing searches that negatively impact your campaigns. But what do I mean by that? Well, if you've been in marketing as long as I have, you'll recognize the sales and marketing funnel. This image here is fundamental to marketing. Now, as you know, PPC and SEO and a lot of direct response marketing is at the very bottom of the funnel because of course, you're targeting people with your Google Ads budget who are ready to convert today. And that's really important. What you don't want to do necessarily when spending money on paid search, when the click costs are so high and the cost of traffic is prohibitive to a lot of advertisers, is spend money on clicks that result in maybes or maybe people who aren't looking for your services right now. So we're gonna understand the five types of personality of people searching who might not be the right kind of people for your ads to target. And when we understand those five audiences, we're going to build a keyword list, a negative keyword list to stop our ads from showing to those particular type of searchers. So what are the five types of searcher who will go to your campaigns and click your ads when they're nowhere near ready to buy? Well, I'm gonna tell you, but before I do that, if you like what you're hearing so far, hit the like button below and let me know in the comments, question of the day. How are you building your negative keyword lists at the moment? Are you just simply using Google Ads Keyword Planner and your search terms reports, or are you being a bit more sophisticated? Let me know in the comments. I reply to pretty much every comment I get, so I'll discuss with you down there. On with the video. So the five types of personality of people searching for your services that you might not want are the questioner, the DIY expert, the price conscious, the big brand lover, and the job hunter. Now the titles of these types of searcher might seem very vague to you at the moment, but let's go through them one by one so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So let's start off with the questioner. This is a person who goes to Google looking for your services, but instead of typing in buying keywords, they look for research instead. Typically the questioner's search will start with a questioning word, like how, where, is, who, why, when. These are the kind of words that people use in those terms where they're questioning things and they're not quite sure whether they're ready to buy yet or not. So it could be something you could look at, especially if you're budget restricted, you could look at building a list of these types of terms to allow your ads not to show to people who are far back in the research stage. But in addition to that, there's another advantage of eliminating this type of searcher. The other advantage is you're not just eliminating people who are in the research phase as opposed to the buying phase, you're also eliminating people who might not even be interested in your service anyway because they might want to do your job themselves and research how to do that, which leads us really nicely onto our next type of negative keyword profile you need to be aware of. The next type of searcher you need to be aware of where you might want to create negative keywords is the DIY expert. Now, I don't mean somebody who wants to do decorating and painting. What I mean is somebody who wants to do your job 
themselves. They want to be able to do what service you're offering. So let's use an example. Say for example, you're a web design company and you design websites for a living and you're advertising on Google. Sounds great right about now. However, what about people who want to learn how to do web design themselves? They might type in very similar searches to those you're advertising with. For example, you might target the keyword build website, but the person searching, the DIY person searching who wants to do it themselves might type in something along the lines of how to build website or website building tutorial or website building how, how to learn to build websites or video showing how to build websites. These are the kind of searches that somebody who wants to do the job themselves will type in, but it will trigger ads. If you go to Google right now and type in DIY searches for any industry, you will see there are a bunch of people advertising for those search terms when they could easily eliminate them by understanding the DIY search profile. Next up, we have the price conscious. Now the price conscious person isn't necessarily someone you always want to eliminate, but if you know your product is not good in terms of price sensitivity compared to your competitors, then you might want to consider eliminating this person. This person will use search terms like cheap, or free or things along those lines and understand the price of services, maybe how much or what's the cost or get a quote. These kind of things for some industries and, and businesses could be very good, but for others, especially those who aren't competitive on pricing and who are quite expensive or premium products, you may wish to eliminate these kinds of searches straight away because even if they click your advert, even if they convert, they're gonna understand your pricing and then run for the hills because they're looking for something cheap or affordable and that is the kind of searcher to be aware of, especially if you're offering premium services. Next up, we have the big brand lover. Now, of course, I advocate a lot of times people to create competitor keyword campaigns because of course, people looking for your competitors could easily transact with you as well. But what if your competitor was absolutely huge? Now, let me give you an example. What if you sell coffee online via Google Ads? You're an independent coffee shop and you're selling coffee bags of coffee beans to take away for your customers and you're selling them on Google Ads. Now somebody goes to Google and types in independent coffee or fair trade coffee or buy coffee online. Great keywords but what if somebody typed in buy Nescafe coffee? That is not a good keyword for you because this person already has a preconceived idea of buying from a major brand and it's somebody they've probably heard of and drank coffee from for years and that could be a negative keyword you should target because of course that person who loves the big brand might be turned off by your smaller brand because they're looking for that specific huge brand. But that doesn't just go for brands in terms of competitor brands if you're a smaller business. It also goes for aggregators as well. Now, when I say aggregators, I mean websites that group different businesses together to make things easier for people to search. For example, if you're a business advertising on Google, you might not want to show up when somebody's looking for businesses on Google, but typing in the word Craigslist or Gumtree or different types of aggregator of services because they are looking for that service provider. So if you're not included in that service provision, then it doesn't make sense for your ads to show. And yes, if somebody is looking for an electrician on Google, but they type in Gumtree electricians, there's still a chance they'll click your advert and convert, of course there is, but there's less of a chance because their expectation is that they want to see on Gumtree. Maybe they have an account, who knows, but that's the intent of the searcher. And finally, this is an obvious one, you have the job hunter. This is a person who will never transact with your business because they work in your niche and they're looking for a job in your niche. So when you set up a new campaign, typically a lot of the time you don't necessarily consider those hunting for jobs. I've seen time and time again, PPC campaigns go live, especially in industries with high staff turnover, like the social care industry and the elderly care industry where staff change hands pretty quickly. That can lead to a lot of people searching for job type keywords and it's important to eliminate those straight away unless you're a recruitment company. So when you head to Google Ads and build your negative keyword list, make sure you eliminate those job type searches. Now, I've covered all five personality types of searcher who you might want to eliminate, but it could be quite difficult for you to understand how to build those negative keywords for those types of searcher. So I've done something for you. I've created a template for you to eliminate those five types of search profile straight away. So you can add these negative keywords in my template into your campaigns when you build new campaigns out and it will help you manage your spend better because you're eliminating people further up the buying funnel or who are 
are indeed completely irrelevant to your business. So that should really help you build negative keyword lists straight away in new campaigns. You can download the list in the description of this video below, but before you do that, just listen to this final caveat because it's really important. Now, the caveat of this is that, of course, you need to lead your decisions on negative keywords based on your ROI. So what I mean by that is a lot of the areas I've covered, for example, those who are price sensitive can still convert into customers. It's really important to note that. It's all about understanding the searches for those terms and the clicks you're receiving and what you're spending are they converting into customers down the line based on your attribution? Maybe in a linear model or a time decay model, they're working really well. Of course, you shouldn't be using a last click model anyway. So hopefully this gives you some insights and helps you understand how to build some of those negative keywords before campaigns even go live. But as I said, remember that you need to lead with your ROI. Sometimes people wanna set a campaign live and then run it with all the keywords open and reduce from there. Others like to go the other way and expand and start with a really tight knit close campaign and add more services and keyword types and ad groups to their campaign and expand that way. The choice is yours. It's up to you and your business niche to make that decision, but this negative keyword list should help you with your setups. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like below. Let me know in the comments question of the day. How do you build your negative keyword lists? Are you just using the Google Ads keyword planner and your search terms, or are you being more sophisticated? Let me know in the comments. I reply to pretty much every comment I get. And more important than that, please like this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other content across my channel. Check out my courses, and I'll see you guys on my next video.